Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wilkie, and I'm back with another fake Grand Order video. And, uh, I wasn't expecting to record a video today, because I was working, and then my brother said to me, Oh my god, they released Oberon. And I said, what? And I looked at it, and it looks like, yeah, they released, they're releasing a banner on NA featuring Oberon. So I'm gonna be talking about... The Story Clear Support Campaign, a.k.a. Jump, uh, Mothman Jump Scare. Uh, and that's gonna be today's video. Uh, just in case, there, I'm not gonna say what it is, but just in the small chance that you accidentally get spoiled for something about Lost Belt 6, feel free to just leave right now. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, all you need to know is that Oberon, very good. Should you summon for him? Yeah, maybe if you got some extra stuff for it laying around, go for it. But if you're planning for his banner already in December, then you can probably just keep on saving just to have a better chance. It all depends on how much stuff you got. But there you go. There's the long and short of it. Now for everyone else that wants the longer details, let's go. So yeah, a story clear support campaign showed up. <laughs> Part 5. Uh, in terms of the actual campaign, just to go over it real quick. It's a story clear support campaign. It goes from the 12th. To the 29th of February, uh, there's going to be a special login bonus, which will begin on the 12th. Uh, this is how it goes. On the first one, the first login, you get a single state quartz, a single ley line stone, and then a single stargazer teapot. And then on the next day, it happens again. And on the third day, it happens again. And there you go. Just log in for three days straight. It shouldn't be that hard. Uh, if you don't know what Leyline Stones are, they're back. These are these make it very easy to go through the story if you're having any form of difficulties on them. Uh, or you're just lazy like me and you're just like, you know what, I could beat this boss if I actually just looked at my team and thought of the team composition. But you know what would be much better and faster? Leyline Stone. Let's go. So yeah, whenever you faint out. And so I think there are certain quests where you can't use a Leyline Stone. Um... But for the most part, you should be able to use them in all the main story stuff here, and it shouldn't be too much of an issue. In terms of usability, it's usable in all main quests of Part 1 through Part 2, and Pseudo Singularities and uh, Chapter 5.5 .5 are also eligible. And these will last you until the 29th. It starts on the 12th, they last until the 29th. Uh, I got an email from work. That's how you know I'm being legit when I say <laughs> I literally just finished work and came uh, over here to talk about this. Main quest AP costs zero through part two, chapter six, limited time. So during the period, the main quest through part two, chapter six, Lost Belt six, uh, Avalon Le Fay, the moment a planet is born, will have their AP cost reduced to zero. Uh, and you can just go straight through it without consuming any K any AP at all. And that will last until the 29th. Uh, eligible quest, main quest within part one from Singularity F through Final Singularity, and then from part two from chapter one through chapter six. Uh, as AP costs for main quest through part two, chapter 5.5 have been permanently halved, they will return to one half cost following the end of the campaign. And please note that the pseudo singularities in the main interlude quest and the free quest will not be eligible for being zero cost. There will be a story clear campaign, which is missions added to the master missions limited time. Clearing them, you'll get a total of 10 Sync Quartz, 10 Stargazer Teapots, 20 Hellfire of Wisdoms, and five uh, for for five SSRs. I was about to say a five SSR. No, that's not true. And uh, five million QP. And this will start on the 15th and go to the 19th. And in terms of the claimability of it, it will go from the 15th to the 29th. So you won't have an entire the entire period to do it, but you'll have. Am I stupid? No. Okay. The mission period should go from the 15th to the 22nd. And then, in terms of claiming it, it'll go from the 15th to the 29th. Uh, and then the Stargazer teapot usage will be here until uh, starting on the 17th, and then it will end on the 29th. Uh, so here are the new missions. Complete the Final Singularity. Complete the Lost Belt number 6. Uh, advance one quest in, uh, in one main quest node in Part 1 and Part 2. Uh, and then advance them at le up to five times for all these here. So not very hard to do at all unless you are just that far back in the story. The complete Lost Belt 6 is actually the hardest one here. But if, you, if you've already beaten it, congratulations, you get 10 St. Quartz. Let's go. Um, please note that the mission period and the rewards claimability period are different. E two times chance of super great success for units for... For servant enhancements, a limited time, a chance of uh, super suck, and a double EXP acquired, and great suck, triple EXP. 
performed when you do a Serpent Enhancement. It will be doubled during the period. Don't miss out. It'll, this will last from the 15th to the 29th. And let's talk about the big uh, thing and the whole reason I'm even talking about this. The Avalon LeFay Clear Support. Avalon LeFay Clear Support over on Pickup Summon Details. So, uh, from the 12th to the 19th. Avalon LeFay, oh my god, why am I having such a hard time today? Avalon LeFay clear support over on Pickup Summon. So he'll only be here for a very limited time. Keep that in mind. He does not last the entire period, which is pretty funny. Uh, three servants, including the limited time Oberon from Part 2, Chapter 6, Fey uh, uh, Round Table Domain. I'm really having a hard time today. Avalon LeFay, the moment the planet is bored, is available for pickup. Uh, all masters will be able to participate in the summon regardless of story progression. Whether or not, but that does mean that, uh, the way they get around this is that all of Oberon's, like, final ascensions are locked behind story stuff. Like, you have to beat the story and then beat another fight to actually unlock it, uh, if you did not know. So they really don't want you to see it unless you, you have to fight for it if you want to see it. And yeah, it'll be a regular banner, which we will have Oberon on it, along with, uh, Bargus and, um... Uh, Babo Sif over here, uh, Trico, as everyone likes to call him, and let's take a look at the units. Even though Oberon is the big focus on here, I have to actually go into here and look for it because this banner was not actually set up beforehand. Actually, I can do a shortcut on this one because, like I said, in December there is going to be a banner like this, only way crazier, being released in December. Um, it should be right here, Lost Belt Six campaign. Remember, this banner will only feature over. I'm just using this as a shortcut to get to the units that talked about them. Um, this is going to be the. I can't believe that they're not on here. Oh yeah, duh, because the they're on the Brittle Mart banner. That's why I'm not seeing them. Uh, where is the Brittle Mart banner? I think it's in November. There it is. Just so I can get again easier access to the units to talk about them. There they are. Vargas, Babosif. So we'll start with Bargus. She is a story lock servant, which is um, being limited with extra steps. And she'll be added to the story banner after you clear Avalon Le Fay. Um, she's Bargus. She is a um, also known as Fairy Knight Gawain, or Tamlin Gawain, depending on when you played it. Uh, she is a saber. I don't know why I was struggling so hard to say Saber. I wanted to say Archer with every art, everything in my being. <laughs> she has one quick, one arts, and three Buster. So she's going full Gawain and going full Buster Gorilla. Her first skill is the Numeral of the Saint B. Increases own attack by 18% for three turns. Increases own Buster performance on the Sunlight Battlefield for three turns. The Sunlight Buster up is 28% at level 10, and you get it. It has a cooldown of five. Her second skill is the Wild Rule A, increases own buster performance for 3 turns, grants self the Survival of the Fittest buff for 3 turns. Uh, survival of the Fittest recovers own HP by 1000 when normal attacking. Removes one latest buff from an enemy when normal attacking. They successfully remove the buff, 500% chance to reduce the defense by 10% for 3 turns. Uh, buster is 30% increased at level 10 and this is on a cooldown of 6. And her third skill is the Foul Weather A, reduces the party's damage taken for 3 attacks 3 turns, grants self regeneration buff for 3 turns, charges the party's MP gauge every turn for 3 turns, the damage taken is 1000, Redu the reduction is 1000, and the MP up is 50% every turn for 3 turns, and this is on a cooldown of 7 to level 10. Her passive skills are Magic Resistance C and, Mad and M Madness Enhancement A+, and her append skill for the third skill is an Anti-Alter Ego Attack Damage Aptitude. And our Noble Phantasm is the Black Dog uh, Galatean, the Horn of the Devouring Sun. It is an anti-army rank A Noble Phantasm that hits 5 times, deals damage to all enemies, and the HP increases own max HP by 3000 um, for 5 turns, uh, reduces own skill cooldowns by 1, and the damage is 300% at level 1, and if you get her all the way to MP5, because if you are constantly summoned in Lost Belt 6 banners, you will get her to MP5, it is 500% damage. And then she also increases her buster performance for a single turn. It's 20% at overcharge level 1, and if you get her all the way to overcharge level, the final level, which is 500%, it is a buster increase of 40%, and that is Bargast. Um, Bargast is a very good unit. Uh, she plays a little bit different than what you would expect from an AoE unit, 
in that for the most part if you're looking for farming she's not really going to be the best and there are better saber options if you're looking for specifically farming but if you're looking for one that can survive for a very long time Vargas is your girl for that and for the specific uh, grail quests that come up later on which are mostly a lot of one-on-one -on -one fights Vargas comes in extremely clutch for a lot of those fights I I've said I've, I've done multiple videos talking about Bargast and at the beginning I was always kind of bummed because Bar I obviously always want to use Bargast um, and the best way to use that would be to AoE and she just does not compare to a lot of the other options to have for AoE buster farming because you have Saber, you have Mordred, you have uh, Ibuki. There's plenty of other options. But in terms of what she does specifically, which is when she's on a one-on-one -on -one fight and she's in that kind of uh, Grail War type of experience, she can definitely survive a whole bunch and she can really take it to them and she ends up being amazing for that. So it's a very different style of unit and I've seen a lot of people complain about <laughs> Grail Wars whenever they show up because they're, they play so differently from how we're expecting them to play. And she can be a great unit for someone who's just, and especially because a lot of people just always end up summoning on Lost Belt 6 because it is one of the most popular, it is probably the most popular Lost Belt actually, uh, filled with a bunch of characters that constantly get banners. They dedicated an entire summon to it, so you're going to have Marcus whether you want her or not because at, at some point you're going to like someone from Lost Belt 6. <laughs> Just statistically saying, at some point you gotta like one of the five stars and always on those banners will feature Vargas and Trico and you will get them to a decent amount of MP levels unless you want them specifically, in which case you'll always get the other one. So if you're a big fan of Vargas like me, you're gonna get like an MP5 uh, Babo Sif and then look at your MP2 going, damn, I can't believe I lost the 50-50 on the featured SR that often. But either way, that's a long way of me saying she's very good, um, very solid. She can fill a niche that ends up being very useful. Because I, I see a lot of people struggling, struggling with the Grail Wars, and it's kind of surprising to me because as long as you have Vargas, you have at least one good option. <laughs> I think a lot of the times it's because people say, like, I don't have any good options because I don't train units for that specific reason. Well, start training up Vargas. Anyway, I think she's really good. And I also really like her unit, and uh, I really wish I actually got her MP5 just so she could do a little bit more damage, but um, I also grilled her out and gave her, I think, Golden Foes, so she does perfectly fine on my end. Maybe that's another reason why she also does really good at me with the Grill Wars. For some reason, her... Quets and Samba Quets do really well. It turns out when you're Grailed and you have Golden Foes, you'll do really good at one-on-one -on -one fights for the most part. But anyway, I digress. That's Bargus. Next, Babo Sif. She's Storylock just like Bargus, and she's an Archer, unlike Bargus, except for I guess Summer. Summer, uh, Summer Barg is in fact a Archer. Um... Her, I was about to say, her Japanese name is really fucking long. Uh, <laughs> she's also known as Fairy Knight Tristan or Tom Lynn Tristan. She has two quicks, two arts, one buster. Her first skill is the Grimalkin A, which is an increased own quick performance for three turns. Grants self invincibility for one turn. Uh, grants party evasion for one attack and a 500% chance to deal 500 damage without killing to the party except for self. Her quick increase is 40% at level 10 and her cooldowns on 6. Her second skill is the Blessed Scion EX. Seals all enemies' MP for one turn. Seals their skills for one turn. Charges own MP gauge by 30% on a cooldown of 6. Uh, her third skill is Fey Vampirism A. Absorbs one enemy's HP without killing. Chance to reduce their MP gauge by 1. Charges own MP gauge. The HP absorb is 3000. The drain chance is 100%. And the MP up is 30%. And the MP charge is 30% at level 10. And the cooldown is, is 6. Her passive skills are Magic Resistance EX, Writing A, and Territory Creation A. Her pen skill for the third skill is the Anti-Alter Ego Attack Damage Aptitude. And her Noble Phantasm is the Fetch Fall of Fail Not, uh, Limitatia of the Fantation, which is a very fancy way of having an anti-army rank E Noble Phantasm for quick. Uh, hits six times, ignores evasion for one turn, activates first, deals damage to one enemy, inflict curse status for a thousand damage for five turns to them. The damage at MP level 1 is 1,200, and if you get her all the way to MP5 trying to go for anyone else on Lost Belt 6, it is 2,000 damage at MP level 5. She also inflicts Evil Curse status for 5 turns to them. 
increasing curse damage on them. The curse damage rate up is 200% at uh, overcharge level 1. And if you get her all the way to the final charge level, which is 500%, it is 400% uh, increase the curse damage rate. And that is Babu Sip over here, aka Trico, aka I know that it's not that, Fairy Nitrous. I know it's not uh, Bob and Sith, but I still like to pronounce the name cor incorrectly to bother a friend. Um, she's also really good. <laughs> All the Lost Belt 6 units, uh, for the most part, are good and can be found to be used the ways for it. Uh, Babu Sip is a very good single target unit. She's a very nice in challenge quest because she has a second ability here, which is just a ceiling in all, of all enemies NP for one turn. A, a skill seal as well, and as well as an MP charger. Her verse skill is also really solid. Not only does it grant her invincibility, she still will have the party evasion after the invincibility goes away, unless they just have a way to bypass all of it with, like, ignore invincibility or something. But it's very nice, because this also can give your party a quick evasion if they need it to. Um, and plus, 40% quick performance up is pretty nice for a skill that's already doing a lot. Like, the fact that the only thing that's really negative about here is that it deals 500 damage without killing the party, uh, kind of worth it. Um, and yeah, she has another way to charge her own MP gauge, which a lot of quick servants can suffer from it, at least currently in NA before we get, uh, double Scotty farming, I guess, where you can use t technically three Scotties to boost up a quick unit, in which case maybe it's dumb to talk about it. Um, but still, who's gonna have that much Scotty power except for the people who are really into quick? Anyway! I digress. This is a really good skill. She's a very good unit. Um, she can be used in a variety of different content, uh, especially if there's any time you need a archer to deal with a boss of some kind. She's going to be there for you. She's going to beat uh, beat him up real quick. And like I said, just similar to Bargast, for the most part, most people are always going to be summoning on Lost Belt Six, and you will just get a a lot of copies of this unit. So she ends up accidentally becoming an extremely strong single target archer for a lot of people. So you may as well take advantage of it if you can, especially if you have a, a Scotty of some kind and you don't have a lot of good single target archers. This is a very good, uh, solid choice for a single target archer. Um, and I've seen her in plenty of like fights where it's like, oh yeah, just use your... <laughs> <laughs> I think that was actually a, a most recent raid quest where it was like, oh yeah, if you're gonna fight, I think it was against Sutter in the, um, uh, in the Koyan Skya raids. I think a lot of people, when Sutter came up, they're just like, oh yeah, it's time to use her. <laughs> it's time to just completely wreak havoc on him and just smack him up with the doll and just kill him that way. So a very good unit, and like I said, similar to Bargus, whether you want them or not, if you want anyone from Lost Belt 6, you're gonna end up getting them, regardless. Um, unless you are specifically summoning for her, in which case, I hope you enjoy your Bargus. Uh, and finally, the actual main unit from this, the, most, of the, most of the time, the reason anyone would summon on this banner, right here, it's Oberon. Oberon... Do I even need to go over what Oberon does, for the most part? Yeah, sure, let's go for it. Oberon, he's a pretender. Um, find out why on Lost Belt 6. Uh, he has two quick, one arts, two buster. His first skill is Curtain of the Night EX. Increases party's MP damage for three turns. Charges party's MP gauge by 20%. The MP damage up is 30%, and this is on a cooldown of 5. His second skill is the Morning Lark EX, which is a, charges of, a charge to one ally's MP gauge, a 500% chance to grant them a delayed debuff for one turn, treat it as a buff, and it's a demerit. Reduce their MP gauge by 20% after one turn, and then gain crit stars. The MP charge is 50%, and the stars gained are 20, and the cooldown is of 6. And his third skill, the End of the Dream EX, increases one ally's buster performance for a single turn, grants them MP damage up boost for one turn, MP damage up boost temporarily multiplies the value of the MP damage up, unstackable. 500% chance to grant them a delayed debuff for one for one time. Treated as a buff, ignores the B debuff resistance and immunity, unstackable. At the end of the turn, grant them the effect below. A 1000% ch chance to remove their buffs. A 500% chance to grant them eternal sleep debuff. Eternal sleep is similar to stun. Unlike stun, this status will ignore debuff resistance and immunity, and effect targets will be unable to be selected as sacrifice. 500% chance to draw attention to all enemies uh, to them by 300% for 3 turns, and 500% chance to seal their order change. 
Uh, the buster increase is 50% and the MP damage up boost is a, is 100% and the skill cooldown is of 8. Uh, the, biz, the best way of saying this is that you get big buff damage and then the unit is effectively dead for the, <laughs> for the remainder of the fight. They're sleeping. They're sleeping in a farm upstate and they will never return from their sleep ever again. Uh, his passive skills, uh, the default, he gets the, you get the name after you clear Avalon Le Fay, but increases the party's debuff and success rate by 10% against enemies of the foreigner enemy while self is on the field, including sub members, and a 500% chance to reduce the buff success rate of Merlin allies by 20% while self is on the field, including sub members demerit. Territory creation E-, minus, the item construction A+, plus, writing A, and a midnight summer and a midsummer night's dream ex which is a grant self of mental debuff immunity to all these um anything that is a mental debuff he has a pen skill for the third skills and anti-caster da uh, attack damage aptitude because if it's any clue here he just really does not like merlin and specifically just Merlin. This only affects Merlin. This does not affect Lady Avalon like I thought, because Lady Avalon is not a Merlin. She's Lady Avalon. Uh, and his noble phantasm is Le Rime Goodfellow, the tale of the dream told over yonder. It's a rank E anti-unit noble phantasm. Hits four times. It is Buster. It deals damage to all enemies. It removes their offensive buffs. Um, and inflicts sleep status for one turn to them, and then a 500% chance uh, to inflict invincibility for one turn to them, demerit. The reason- oh, okay. The damage is 300% at level 1, and if you get him to MP level 5, it's 500%. And then he deals extra damage to enemies of the lawful alignment, 150% of charge level 1, and if you get him all the way to the final charge level, which is 500%, it is 200%. And if you're wondering why he gives them invincibility, the reason is is that if um, when you give a sleep status to something, it's kind of like stun. Um, but if you hit them right afterwards, it wakes them up from the stun. So if you give them invincibility, you'll be able to just keep them asleep, basically, is how you do it. And that's Oberon. How good is Oberon? He is uh, absolutely insane. Uh, worth owning, worth having, worth anything. <laughs> it's uh, it's kind of crazy. So in terms of support, he offers basically every single team that you can think of support. The only negative he has towards support is that this skill right here, if you do not use it correctly, can cause you to just straight up lose. Because obviously if you use this, it's meant to be used as a standpoint to say the ed the fight is over i'm going to kill you and if you do not actually kill them after you use the move then it kind of defeats the purpose of having a move that says okay i end the i end the game now you're supposed to die and they don't die and you go well shit that's unfortunate but again it requires you to just be a little bit better when you're using this even though the damage is very big if you are going to plan to use this on a challenging fight you should be aware of the negative side of it as well um, it's kind of like a, it's a, I would say in a way kind of balanced in that way that at least, hey, if you're going to use this unbelievably strong thing, even if you want to try and use this in a challenge fight, just know that if you mess up with this, you are going to get completely destroyed out of the sky. Um, but yeah, other than, in terms of just pure support, he is everything that you could ask in a package. In a single package, he has a total of 70% charge gain up. Which is just absolutely insane to give. Um, his first skill gives it 30% to everyone. Um, no, it's not. 20%, my bad. Excuse me. And his uh, Morning Lark skill gives at least 50%, and that's real crazy. This part where it says the, the debuff doesn't really matter. If it's one, the last turn, which if you use it on turn three, it doesn't matter. Two, doesn't matter if you're using Buster, because for the most part, a lot of Buster units um, already start at 0% after they use their MP. And certain Arts units and Quick units, they should be able to make up for it, but again, for the most part, you're using them on turn 3, where it would be most... Uh, you would use this skill on the, th the third turn, so less chance for this to kind of screw you over in the long run. And in terms of the third skill, you'd think like, oh, this only really applies to Buster, but this MP damage up boost is so insane, it actually benefits Arts and it benefits Quick as well. So even if you're not taking advantage of the increase of one alley's Buster performance, 
it still does a lot of good for you. Like, it's it's absolutely insane. The I can't even articulate 100% of the reasons why Oberon is so good, because I don't even know how MP damage up boost 100% works. I think I've had it explained to me before. All I know is that it make the big damage number go up, and that's enough for me and Fago, to be honest. Um... Oberon is so good that this that this Demerit to Merlin was enough to make Japanese players say like, yo, buff Merlin, this is insane. <laughs> for the most part, Merlin for me was a unit that was like, oh yeah, he has negatives towards him, sure, he's not as good as he used to be, but there's still plenty of benefits now, but now he literally just can't be used with Oberon. And so much of a lot of like support, a lot of boss fights. And it can, it can, it can probably be a little bit frustrating as well, because especially when the big Koi and Sky raid was happening, a lot of the team builds were like, yo, use Oberon and you'll have no problem. And everyone was like, don't got him. So that's great. Thank you very much. Um, that's how kind of crazy he is. And that's just on terms of the support. That's a very quick and dirty way of saying it. There's so many ways that you could describe how good this guy is. But you can just look at the skills and you know. The fact that this skill right here just says so little and is enough to make you go damn. And then you look at the second skill and this also reads like, oh yeah, a couple sentences, good. And then the third skill hits you like a Yu-Gi-Oh! Pendulum card. And even then it's like, I just know this effect is very good with a big demerit. And that's all you need to know, really. Use it on the third turn if you're farming and it never comes up except for your, uh, your dude takes a little nap. Before they, uh, when the when the, when the fight ends, they'll just take a nap while everyone else is celebrating. Basically, that's how I treat it as. Uh, and in terms of his AOE, it actually is possible to farm with Oberon. It kind of depends on a lot of factors. One, the big factor is if you have, uh, I believe, the Black Grail, and it has to be max limit broken. I think that's the main. Unless you're you just have like a bunch of copies of Oberon. But if you have the, the Black Grail at max limit break, you can farm with Oberon. I've done it before, it's so funny. <laughs> for, for some reason, going double over, uh, going Koyan Skaya, double Koyan Skaya, and my own Oberon to do, <laughs> to do, um, my farming for me is just super funny to me. It's, it's really good. It's insane how good he is. It's funny, the fact that you can do it, it's really more of a flex than anything. It's not really a thing to say like, yo, he's one of the best. Because being Pretender, it makes his class alignments just a little bit funky. But it's okay, as long as you remember which ones he has advantage over, it's not going to be too bad. Um, which is what I do. <laughs> And it's not too bad. It's never come up to me where it's like, unless it's like a mixed node. If it's a mixed node where it's like, oh yeah, features some from this class and some from the other one, obviously Oberon is just not going to be able to farm for you on that one. And it's kind of like, oh boohoo, that kind of sucks. Anyway, let me go back to using him as the way he was intended to be used, which was a support. Oberon, really good. Really fucking good. <laughs> That's the end statement. Uh, a lot of people... I saw from uh, reading some comments were like, oh fuck, I, what? Um, I was expecting his banner near December. This isn't good, and it's gonna likely throw a lot of people off, and they're gonna just immediately summon for him. And in terms of should you summon, this is a rare case where I'm like, uh, yeah, I think if you have the ability and it's within reason, Obviously, if you're saving and you have Oberon, there's no reason for you to get Oberon. Unless you like doing a little bit of the funny and you like the idea of farming with Oberon, then go ahead, I guess. Um, but if you have one copy at MP1, you will literally be okay. It, I don't I don't ever see a purpose of going up beyond MP1 other than for the above mention of farming to just hilariously flex on the opponent. Uh, which is just a bunch of CPU, so you're- who are you truly flexing on, even if it is funny? It's kind of like the- I don't know, sometimes you just do fun things in video games for fun. Um, but yeah, if you have the means to summon for him and you don't have him, um, I would say you're probably good to shoot a multi at him if you have a multi to spare. But if you're someone who has been saving for a very long time and you're waiting for future units, you know, it, then it becomes a little bit more tough. Then I say look at your supply, look at your things, and decide whether or not you want to summon for Oberon. And if you already have the plan to summon for Oberon in December, um, I would suggest just waiting for December. As much as it seems like it's going to take way longer to actually like get to summon for him, 
if you're already planning ahead to be like, no, I'm gonna have him in December, and this is your good, this is gonna be your best time. I need the time to build up for more multis. This banner will be here. The only thing that's a bummer is that this banner is also shared with Muramasa and Mel Melusane. But if you don't care about either one of them and just want Oberon, then you'll be perfectly fine with just Oberon, regardless of anything. Um, and if you're looking for the ahead times in uh, Fago, the next big banner is actually going to be the the CCC one, which features Melt, um, King Protea, and uh, Passion Lip, which are all characters that are deeply liked, and Suzuki Gozen, which is liked by, I think, my brother and my friend. Um, so yeah, definitely some people I saw going, no, I want to save. I was saving for them. <laughs> it's very unfortunate. And I also think this is a bad time to release it in terms of NA because they literally just finished. <laughs> Bazette just finished. <laughs> and there was like a full gauntlet of a bunch of Valentine's Day units. Like they had, like the idea of releasing this after like doing all of the original Valentine's Day units and then doing all the um, non-limited and story-locked female units, and then Bazette, and then Karen, and then being like, okay, Oberon before CCC, right? It's, it's kind of messed up. <laughs> it's a little messed up. And then also, uh, in March, there's going to be Arjuna Alter, Merlin, and Gilgamesh. So if you're a big fan of any one of those three, um, and I get, I get, I gotta bring, I gotta bring up Tesla, otherwise I'm gonna get yelled at for not acknowledging Tesla. And Tesla too, he's a very good archer, or so I'm told. Um, it's kind of one of those things, if you're already planning for one of these other units, you know, maybe look ahead a little bit. I do think Oberon is likely, I mean, there's a little bit of a debate that you could probably have whether or not the, the, the man with the giant stick or the man who gives him the giant stick is uh, one of the better unit. What's better, the Arjuna Altar that is killing the team or the unit that's actually allowing Arjuna Altar to kill the team? I don't know. It's a little, it's, it's something to think about for sure. It's like a chicken and the egg kind of situation. I think it's a little bit more of a, I probably lean towards a support. I think be, just because a support can be used with multiple units and it's kind of like that. Anyway, I think I'm talking too much for what needs to be said here, and the end-all factor here is I wish you guys the best of luck if you're summoning. I already have my Oberon. I really want more copies of Bargus, but I'm already going to be summoning for more Bargus copies when I go for Brittle Mart later on in the year. So that's where I'll get my other copies of hopefully Bargus and not more copies of Sif that I already have. But if you're going for Oberon, feel free to tell me how you do. Uh, this one's kind of a... This is going to be a rough one for a lot of people. I already know that there's probably going to be a decent chunk of people who are just going to be like, well, all my plans just kind of went out the window. It's a very hard temptation. It's kind of crazy that they did this too. I saw that in Korea they didn't get the Fate Stay Night banner, and they got like an Oberon related one to Lost Belt 6. And I think I remember seeing some people going like, is this going to happen in NA? And I was, I was thinking, it's like, ah, I could maybe happen, but it seems kind of weird to just drop it off. It seems kind of weird to just drop Oberon randomly on <laughs> the NA side. But hey, I guess they just decided that it'd be a good idea to randomly drop over on. So there you go. That's the end of the video, everyone. I wish you guys the best of luck. Um, I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a good day and see you later. Goodbye. Peace out.